Next speaker is Shannon Kellogg, the Director of Public Policy for Amazon, where he leads the company's policy efforts for Amazon Web Services. Shannon has prior IT experience at EMC Corporation, the Business Software Alliance, and the Information Technology Association of America, and he has his degree from George Mason University. Awful nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Matt. Good to see you. Thanks. Good morning, or good afternoon now, right? How's everybody doing? Excellent. Well, Elizabeth, I thought that was a great uh, way to get going, and uh, I'm actually going to talk about workforce development as well a little bit later on as part of, uh, as actually a key part of IT modernization. Um, but it's great to uh, see everybody and uh, also to be here with Lexington. I love the work that Mac and Lexington do. Uh, I think they're really uh, great uh, strategic thinkers and uh, certainly a think tank, but also a do tank. They put out a lot of great products and ideas, so thank you guys. Um, so a uh, little bit about uh, you know my background other than what uh, Mac uh, read. I've actually been in this industry now for about 20 years and started as a cyber guy back when a bunch of us or actually a handful of us thought you know we were cyber before cyber was cool uh, and uh, uh, you know here we are now in 2018 and six years after joining Amazon I thought that I joined Amazon you know before cloud was cool which was kind of the case but now looking at over the last uh, half a dozen years to see what's happened in the cloud space and in the federal IT space, it's just moved so quickly uh, and there have been so many changes, which I'm going to talk a little bit about and kind of where we're, where we're going forward. But in my role at Amazon, uh, working with AWS, I get actually a chance to travel around uh, a lot internationally including throughout the Americas here, and I have uh, uh, federal government, state government, uh, as well as uh, everything from Canada all the way down to Argentina under my portfolio for government affairs and public policy. And I get a chance to go out and really learn a lot about what state governments are doing, provinces are doing uh, around IT modernization uh, in various countries and what national governments are trying to do. And as I look back over the last few years, um, there have been consistency in drivers uh, around IT modernization. Uh, governments want to do more with less. Uh, you know, it's consistent no matter where we go, governments are trying to save money. But it's not just about saving money. Governments are also very focused these days on trying to get faster access to technologies and to do that in a more agile way and to do that with more flexibility and to shift to this model, which of course we and others are very focused on right now around commercial cloud, which is the pay for what you actually consume model. And it's not just because you save money, it's because you have flexibility. And if something doesn't go the way you plan it to go, uh, and we have, uh, I think, a list of those projects here in the U.S. federal government over the years. I won't pick on anyone in particular, um, but you kind of know what they are, where there are large-scale IT failures. That doesn't have to be the case anymore. If you have more agility and you have the ability to scale up and scale down quickly, you're going to be able to not only save money that you would have spent uh, otherwise, but you're going to be able to shift quickly to solve whatever uh, whatever problem you're trying to solve. And that's not an uncommon thing that government the governments want to do, and we're seeing that consistently in places like Canada. We're seeing that uh, consistently in places like now Argentina, Chile, and Colombia with their new government. Um, uh, the more governments that I talk to that are adopting cloud-first strategies, having this increased agility is very, very important to them in addition to the cost savings. And the, and the third common driver that we're seeing around IT modernization is the desire uh, to really improve cybersecurity, both at the organizational level as well as if you're talking to a state, statewide in systems. If you're talking to somebody at the federal level, federal-wide in, in the federal government, and certainly national in terms of actual countries. And we're seeing that consistently uh, over the last uh, couple of years in particular. When I first started here at Amazon in October of 2012, I got asked two questions, usually. One was, what was cloud? And the other one was, is cloud secure, or why is it not secure? And believe me, that is completely changed now. People generally understand what commercial cloud is today and how it fits within IT modernization. People generally understand that um, cloud has all the benefits that I was mentioning around 
uh, you know, doing more with less, having that increased agility. But increasingly, I'm seeing policymakers and national level government decision makers understand that cloud has to be a critical part of other modernization efforts because of the security benefits. Because if you think about what governments are dealing with today, and as they go into the 21st century, and I'm going to shift a bit completely to the federal level here in a moment, is um, governments are, are looking to get away from doing all of this manual patching in, in legacy systems. You know, getting away from having dependence on people to be in the middle of things when you look at your organization's cybersecurity posture. Governments and leaders within agencies are looking increasingly uh, to uh, automate, to have that complete visibility within their environments, but to get away from the manual patching and into the, the automation that exists within the commercial cloud, and they're seeing that that's a huge benefit. Um, if, you, if you then shift to what's happening around IT modernization at the federal level today, I don't think it's a surprise to see where we're going. Uh, many of you, and I see Rich Patel in the back, who's one of the staff authors of the Federal IT Acquisition Reform Act, FITARA. I can't believe I can still spell that out and say, say that acronym. But many of you have been involved in the federal IT reforms over the years, either on the Hill or in the industry or in the administrations. And so you're very familiar with some of these big ticket signature items going all the way back to the IT plan of 2010, the 25 point plan, and then the Cloud First strategy that was released in 2011, and then fast forwarding you know, through Qatar and that process in the 2013-2014 uh, time frame, and then now jumping forward 2007-2018. So you see a lot of those big ticket items. But what I find really interesting, and I think um, is, is critical, is that uh, from administration to administration, you see agreement. You see agreement that the federal government has to continue to modernize the systems, that the federal government has to continue to try to leverage commercial capabilities, including commercial cloud, as much as it possibly can. And if you look back at the 2017 executive order around cyber that the president issued in the summer of 2017, it had some fundamental things in there that built off the Obama ex executive order of, of uh, early 2013. Um, but it also included for the first time a very direct linkage between improving cybersecurity for the federal government and IT modernization and shift to cloud and utilizing more shared services. And, and so I hope that people, if they haven't read that executive order, really do read it again and also talk about it because that's that shift that I'm talking about, that, that, that really strong focus on realizing that in order to improve cybersecurity, you have to modernize your system. And then, you know, building off that, the administration came out with the recommendations um, that came out on uh, IT modernization from the White House to the President later that year, 2017. And then Congress, of course, passed the Modernizing Government Technology Act around the same time. Uh, and then you had into 2018 work now on the on the updated uh, uh, smart cloud uh, strategy or cloud smart strategy that the White House is putting together, um, and so all of these things continue to build off each other. Uh, I understand I wasn't there, but I understand that Chris Liddell was at a Washington Post event uh, uh, yesterday, a forum uh, that they held around uh, federal IT, and he talked about how federal IT modernization and the criticality of it is something that, you know, is going to carry on for years, and it's going to go from one administration to another, and it's something that's vital and that, you know, can't happen necessarily overnight, uh, but that they're going to continue to push ahead, and most, most importantly, they're going to work on a bipartisan basis. And so, I'm going to wrap up as I'm running out of time, but as we, as we look back to the last week, and we see where we've been even in the last decade with federal IT modernization uh, here at the federal level, but think about the elections and the results. There is an opportunity for this new Congress and this administration to continue to work together over the next couple of years to help federal agencies and the federal government become more nimble, become more cost effective, be able to more effectively deliver citizen services uh, to the citizens of all of these agencies that are receiving the 
and services through more modern systems and secure systems. And by the way, it also means that our national security establishment, including the Department of Defense, can leverage the best technology available. Uh, and, and to do that, you know, in a more nimble way, hopefully going forward. And so all of these things are critical uh, to make the government uh, and help make the government more efficient and save money. But it's also about the security of our country and leveraging some of the technologies that Elizabeth was talking about including the machine learning and artificial intelligence space, which is not only going to impact internal processes and systems, but will enable our own intelligence community, uh, the Department of Defense, and other mission-oriented agencies to actually compete effectively internationally when you talk about national security and competing with other countries. And so I'll stop there, but I appreciate the work that you do. Again, uh, Mac and, and Lexington, I look forward to working with all of you uh, in the coming months uh, as uh, hopefully the Congress and the administration continue to move the ball forward here in uh, finding uh, ways to um, expand and advance IT modernization of the federal government. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming.